morning. Can you hear me? Yes, Judge. Good morning, Your Honor. Yes, I can hear you. No worries. Justice Iver, can you start your camera, please? Yes, Judge, but I am not dressed appropriately. For the record in the matter of Edgewood Villas LDHA versus Deborah Bentley and Nicholas Sasser, file number 20-01399 LTE. Council appearance, please. Tom Siver on behalf of the plaintiff. Good morning, Your Honor. Christina Corcoran appearing on behalf of the defendants. Thank you. This was the date that was scheduled for a bench trial. The court has received a conditional dismissal in order. Uh, before we address that, though, I do want to address that the court did receive a phone call, a very interesting one, to say the least, Mr. Cyber, from one of your witnesses. Um, they were concerned, wondering why this case was dismissed and why the court would allow the defendant to have 30 days to vacate the property. Um, that witness shared that you indicated to them that the court dropped the ball on this matter, that there uh, is a new judge who doesn't know what she's doing. Nope. Um, and so that is why this case was dismissed. And no, so judge. I found that to be extremely interesting, um, very colorful to say the least, as, as my recollection in the court record will reflect You've missed court more than one time on this file. So if anyone didn't know what they were doing, it wasn't the judge. Mr. Let Simon. me explain what's happened. This is Miss uh, Perez that called my office the other night and railed me out about why it's taking so long to get this through and why uh, we're giving her 30 days and that she looked at the conditional dismissal and because we sent it out to all the witnesses that were subpoenaed saying, hey, we've settled this. She was not pleased with us for taking until April 15th. She was uh, pretty adamant that I had not done my job, even though I had gotten it approved by the regional manager. And she said, what's going on in the court? And I said, we do have a new judge. The, the case did get reopened. And it's taken some time. I said, we're in the middle of a pandemic. So that's what was said to her. And I know that she was not happy and she did disconnect the phone on me. And my wife and my daughter were sitting here in the office. It was about 6.30 at night. I don't know what uh, your response that we have a new judge has to do with anything as it relates to this case. Again, this is a case where you dropped the ball on multiple occasions, okay? The judge in the court has not dropped the ball on this case, not I a single time. The, I never said the court did. Okay, well, the, even the mere implication that the reason that this case was still pending had anything to do with the court is, impro is improper. This is the case that I almost had to find you in contempt on. Did you share that portion? When you, were, when you mentioned my name for, to anyone, and as it relates to Judge Simmons, I don't ever want to hear back that you have made a disparaging remark I regarding me and my oversight over my cases. Do you understand that? That's understood, Judge, but I did not make any disparaging remarks about you. I would never do that. I will tell the court I found it extremely troubling and whenever I missed the first hearing because the notice was sent by the court to a Florida appeal box and that is a retired attorney. That is not my father. It was not the address that was on the plea. That, that, that issue has been resolved and we've addressed that at length. We will not travel down that rabbit hole. Um, there's fine. a reason why that, was a, why that was sent to that address. The judge had nothing to do with that. It had nothing to do with the fact there was a new judge on the bench. Again, the mere implication that the reason why this case is resulting in a stipulated dismissal has anything to do with the judge is disgusting. She just wanted to know why it took so long, Judge. It had nothing to do with the judge. Maybe you should share that. You know, I missed court a couple times. And so that tied up the case. 
Did you mention that part? You did not. No so judge. once again, like you're, you're, you're free to tell whatever, whatever colorful stories regarding it's your representation of your story, clients judge. as you wish, but you, what you won't do is you won't disparage the court and you won't that disparage my work. name in the I process. I never do that. And I, so I, I don't need, I will not have uh, your witnesses contacting the court um, concerned about statements that you've made to them. I haven't and, made statements like that. Do we need to get your witness on the phone? No. Okay. With that being said, I do have a conditional dismissal here. States here, the defendants will vacate on April 15, 2020. Plaintiff agrees to provide a neutral reference in response to any inquiries. Should the defendant default on the terms of this agreement, plaintiff will submit an affidavit of default or an order for reinstatement of the case and an order of eviction, which will enter simultaneously. Should plaintiff default on the terms of the agreement, defendant will file a motion to compel along with the request for sanctions. This order resolves all factual issues that were brought or could have been brought by either party under this suit as it was as, as to the rent and habitability with the exception of enforcement of this settlement. This shall be considered a final order of the court and the honorable court shall retain jurisdiction of this matter for the enforcement of the terms contained herein. This was signed by you, Mr. Cyber, as well as you, Ms. Corcoran. The court had no party in negotiating this agreement, um, nor did the court have any party or concern and interest in facilitating a, a dismissal by the parties. The court was prepared to move forward with a trial today. And so I wanted to put that on the record um, after getting, this is the second concerning call that I've gotten in the last seven days with your name attached to it, Mr. Seibert. Um, and so, oh, well, we can address that at another time. Um, but uh, my request is you, that you keep my name out your mouth. Judge, I'm entitled to know what the the complaints were. I, t I told you, 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 you're, you can talk to me off the record on it. It has nothing to do with this case that okay. we're on the record on. Okay. But what I said is, you are to keep my name out of your mouth because apparently you have a problem with speaking the truth as That's it relates to my all, name. That's not true at all. I would request that you actually know what the conversation was. I can call my wife and have her on the phone. It, it was a very I, much you I can, to take a I'll, I'll allow you to call your wife as long as you call Ms. Perez as well. Judge, if you judge with tenants and with the general citizen. I don't need population. you to explain. I don't need you to explain anything to me about tenants. If you want to call your wife, that's your prerogative. I'll let you call your wife and you can call Miss Perez as well. Otherwise, I don't want to hear anything. Well, I'm not going to drag this on. I, I didn't say thank anything you. Disparaging any additional matters the for the record? Yes, I did any not additional say matters anything. For the record? I did not say anything disparaging about the court or you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Any additional matters for the record? Ms. Corcoran. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, not for this case, but I will, I will just say, Your Honor, that I've had the opportunity to be in courtrooms for 14 years and that it is disheartening and disappointing that I have seen Mr. Seaver in action many times and I've never seen him be as disrespectful to Judge DeLuca, Judge Cherry, or any of the other judges I've observed him with in the manner that he has disrespected your honor. Um, and not that it's, I, I'm not taking that on, that's his actions, but I just, because I understand the hardships that you face as the judge, um, that I apologize that you had to endure these disrespects. I appreciate that. I understand and recognize as a black woman in this position that these are issues that I would likely have to face. It's an unfortunate situation. It doesn't just contain itself to how he's handled himself um, uh, in his representation of his clients, but there's been times where Mr. Cyber has been on this court and has paused it so he can ha handle it on the matter, which is completely disrespectful. And if anyone has dropped the ball continuously as evidenced by the record, and live via Zoom, it's been Mr. Cyber. And so I should not be getting a phone call from anyone um, where it's been said to them that the reason why this case resulted in the dismissal that it's resulted in is because of any action taken by the court or inaction taken by the court. So it's very disturbing. 
Um, I did grant Mr. Cyber an, a, a certain amount of grace um, early on that I can tell you right now, I'll never do again. Well, it'll never happen. Judge, it'll never happen again. I'm not asking judge. you for. I'm not asking you. I'm not asking you to respond to my statement. Well, I'm not responding to your statement, but I am telling you if that's how you felt, I personally apologize to you as a as a person. I will tell you this. I grew up playing college football and football all the way from when I was a little kid. And uh, I don't see people as male or female. I don't see them as white, black, Mexican, Asian, or anything. I see them as you're a judge, you hold a position, we respect you. Uh, I hold a position as an attorney. Okay, not a big deal. But I don't see you, you brought up that you see yourself as a black woman. I see you as a judge. That's all I see you I, as. I didn't say I see myself as a black woman. I am a black woman. I see you as a judge. So you can say, you can say the, the, the response because I don't buy it. Okay. Just so we're clear. I don't care what sport you played. Well, I apologize to you as a human. Yeah, and you can apologize as the as the judge of the court too. As an attorney, you know that there is a decorum that you're supposed to have when you come before the court and you've failed multiple times to approach this court and address this court that I preside over appropriately in a way that's respectable, in a way that an attorney is supposed to, to, to approach themselves. And so I appreciate Ms. Corcoran for addressing the fact that she's seen you in other courtrooms because I wondered how you acted in other courtrooms. I'm inclined to believe that you wouldn't act this way before Judge Alderson. Judge, there's major issues when the court is taking JIS information and then it's affecting the lawyers. The, the court, meaning the judge, because I didn't take any information out of JIS. The, the, it wasn't the judge, it was the court, the, the, the staff that takes in the cases when they do JIS and for addresses, instead of the address that's on the pleading. What was your excuse for missing court last week? There's no excuse. I blew that one. I Thank thought you. I had it Thank you. This is, there's no excuse, period. I had you it, had notice of the I court dates docketed. and you failed to appear. And even if the information was taken out of JIS and you disagree with how that information was retrieved by the clerk's office. I dropped the, the ball last week. Judge. The, I told you, I dropped the ball. I had it. Yeah, no, share, that with Ms. share that with Ms. Perez. Don't share that with the court. The court noted that you dropped the ball. Um, any additional matters for the record? Thank you. We're off the record. The order.